The Arcana Force are a small archetype based on the major arcana within the tarot. They are not particularly well fleshed out, as only 9 of the 22 cards are represented. I am going to be upfront and honest, saying that the Arcana Force archetype is bad, disjointed, slow, inconsistent. But how well do they correspond to the archetypes represented in the major arcana? Again, let's start with the Fool. Each monster has two sections of rules text, the first as a generic effect, then the second effect based on chance. At all times, the Fool cannot be destroyed by battle and can only be changed to defense position by a card effect. Then, upon summon, a coin is flipped and one of the two effects take place. This is a mechanical representation of how each card has two interpretations based on the card's orientation. This is an excellent concept, but like with most gamble cards, the effects are not balanced for an interesting risk and reward potential. But let's take a closer look at those effects. Heads. Negate your card effects that target this card and destroy them. And Tails. Negate your opponent's card effects that target this card and destroy them. We see asymmetric targeting immunity, which may correspond to carelessness, or perhaps berayment. Neither effect is good, and the use in the anime was a creature swap target, which makes me think it was supposed to be bad. Oh, the querent is seeking meaning alright. The magician is next. Heads. When a spell card is activated, this card's attack becomes double the original attack until the end phase of this turn. And tails. When a spell card is activated, your opponent gains 500 life points. I am thinking the effects correspond to self-confidence and disgrace, but I want to compare it to a few other cards of the era, like Karate Man, Mystical Beast Cerebus, and even Jirai Gumo. Although not one is an exact replacement, I think all three are generally better than a conditional 2200 attack monster. Plus, none of them give your opponent a spell absorption effect. Which is a pity, as the Magician has one of my favorite artworks in the game. Skipping the High Priestess, we have the Empress. Heads. Each time your opponent normal summons or sets a monster, you can special summon one Arcana Force monster from your hand. And Tails. Each time your opponent normal summons or sets a monster, send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Swarming is good. But the risk is just too high. First, you have to commit a weak monster onto the board, then half the time your opponent can rapidly deplete your hand. With no inherent protection, even if you always got the heads effect, the card would not be good. At least it highlights fruitfulness and the unraveling of involved matters quite well. Onto the Emperor, we have a team-wide buff. Half the time. Heads. All Arcana Force monsters you control gain 500 attack. And Tails. All Arcana Force monsters you control lose 500 attack. You can get lucky and have a modest attack buff, or you could run Luminous Spark, which does not take up your normal summon and has a less significant downside. Maybe a 1000 attack point buff would have been enough to consider the card. Plus, it would correspond better to the power interpretation of the card. Moving forward again, we have the Lovers, which is definitely a trial to overcome. Heads. This card can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of an Arcana Force monster. And Tails. You cannot tribute summon Arcana Force monsters. A double tribute monster, only with a conditional Mask of Restrict effect sometimes. This card is absolutely awful when we compare it to Kaiser Seahorse and arguably even more pointless than Light Effigy. This will have to be a candidate for worst archetype members in a future video. The Chariot is almost good, and it represents the triumph and defeat in battle quite well. Heads. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon that monster to your side of the field. And Tails. Your opponent gains control of this card. The upside is a Goyo Guardian-like effect, but better, since the stolen monster can be in attack position. The downside is giving your opponent a monster, going minus two. And I just want to point out that cards designed around giving your opponent a monster 
have become progressively worse, especially since they can be used as link material now. Temperance is a hand trap for some reason. For once, there may be a favorable comparison with another card, that being Karibo, since this is a decently statted monster with a similar effect. But while on the field, the effect is pretty bad. Heads. Have all battle damage you take. And tails. Have all battle damage your opponent takes. At least the card is consistent when dealing with battle damage. As far as representative accuracy, perhaps unfortunate combinations, or competing interests, but otherwise I am drawing a blank. Let me preference this one with interpretation first. The moon is a bad card, dealing with hidden enemies, danger, and instability. In that sense, the moon is faithful to its tarot inspiration. Heads, during your standby phase, you can special summon one moon token. Fairy type, light attribute, level 1, with zero attack and defense. And tails, during each of your end phases, select one monster you control and give it to your opponent. The token effect is so slow that you will never be able to take advantage of it before the moon is destroyed. Then the worse effect is like the chariot, giving your opponent another monster and again going minus 2 absolutely awful on a two-tribute monster. Finally, we have the assured success and inertia of the world. This monster is probably the only member of the archetype which is dangerous and unhealthy for the game. Heads, during your end phase, you can send two monsters you control to the graveyard to skip your opponent's next turn. And tails, during your opponent's draw phase, add the top card of their graveyard to their hand but it hinges upon them having a card there during the draw phase, and, for that matter, having a draw phase at all. This card is degenerate, only useful to skip your opponent's turn and then OTK next turn. The World is a very good card to end on, but as an addenda, we have the Light and Dark Rulers, but I'm not so sure if they are members of the archetype. In name, yes, but maybe not in theme, as they offer two positive effects. But that pretty much covers the Terra's impact on the Arcana Force archetype.